number 5. North Korea called on Friday for a halt to what it called brutal sanctions, saying the measures, imposed after its latest nuclear test, constituted genocide. Today the US-led racket of brutal sanctions and pressure against the DPRK constitutes contemporary human rights violations and genocide, the North Korean mission to the United Nations in Geneva said in a statement. The sanctions regime threatens and impedes the enjoyment by the people of DPRK of their human rights in all sectors, it said. The calls for an immediate end to the sanctions comes as US President Donald Trump sets off on a trip to Asia, including China, South Korea, and Japan, looking for help to pressure North Korea to stand down from the nuclear crisis. The global community has been ramping up the pressure on the isolated country after it conducted its sixth and most powerful nuclear test so far on September 3rd. This is the first time North Korea has indicated that sanctions are hurting it. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how sanctions are starting to impact North Korea. Number 4 The Democratic People's Republic of Korea DPRK, has engaged in a broad range of activities over the years that has drawn international condemnation in the form of sanctions. Chief among them are the development of nuclear weapons and ballistic missile technology. North Korea's leadership under successive Kims deems the acquisition of nuclear weapons as the sole means by which to guarantee its survival. Pyongyang points to US military bases in the region and regular war games with South Korea and Japan as a threat to North's existence. A nuclear-armed North Korea presents an existential threat to its Asian neighbors and a growing danger to the United States. With few foreign policy options, world powers have continued to rely on economic and financial sanctions to isolate the Kim regime and draw it back into denuclearization discussions. Number 3 The 15-member UN Security Council has passed eight rounds of sanctions, all unanimously, against North Korea since its first nuclear test. However, the UN sanctions regime still allows for humanitarian assistance to flow into North Korea. Over time, the restrictive economic measures have expanded to include a ban on trade of arms and military equipment, machinery, material, and dual-use technology, asset freezes for individuals involved in the country's nuclear program, ban on certain luxury goods and natural gas imports, ban on statue, coal, mineral, iron, seafood, and textile exports, cap on North Korean labor exports, and cap on oil imports. The EU has adopted a number of legal acts imposing restrictive measures against the DPRK, which implemented several UN Security Council resolutions and include additional autonomous measures that complement and reinforce the UN-based sanctions. These restrictive measures, for the most part, target the DPRK's nuclear-related, other weapons of mass destruction-related, and ballistic missile-related programs. They include prohibitions of the trade of goods, services, and technology which could contribute to the DPRK's above-mentioned programs. A number of people and entities that have been linked to these illegal programs have been subject to travel restrictions and asset freeze, both by the UN and autonomously by the EU. Other restrictions in application of UN sanctions and or as EU autonomous measures also apply in the broader trade, transport, and financial sectors. EU DPRK economic interaction has been reduced as a result of several UN Security Council resolutions and EU restrictive measures against the DPRK. Number 2 Apart from UN and EU sanctions, some countries have imposed specific sanctions of their own. South Korea has implemented numerous sanctions on institutions and individuals. Most recently, it's put sanctions on 18 North Koreans, barring any financial transactions between those sanctioned and any South Koreans, as part of efforts to dry up Pyongyang's illegal cash flows. With this, South Korea has North Korea sanctions imposed on 97 individuals. U.S. sanctions targets economic activities and target a larger list of individuals and businesses than U.N. sanctions. They're primarily designed to impede Pyongyang's development of missile and nuclear technology, but are also a response to North Korea's cyber attacks, like its 2014 breach of Sony, human rights violations, and money laundering. Additionally, the United States has sanctioned some North Korean entities 
for supporting Pyongyang's weapons programs, including Chinese banks and companies and Russian firms and individuals. It's also fined companies like China's ZTE for violating U.S. exports controls with regard to North Korea and Iran. Just before President Donald Trump arrives in Beijing, the Senate Banking Committee approved the Otto Warmer Banking Restrictions Involving North Korea Act, or Brink Act, in a unanimous vote. The bill, which has broad bipartisan support, would represent a significant increase in U.S. economic pressure on Chinese firms, including major banks, that help North Korea stay afloat and evade existing sanctions. Tokyo has also restricted commercial and diplomatic exchanges with North Korea. In addition to UN measures, it imposed sanctions against North Korea starting in 2006, but it lifted some of these in 2014 to induce Pyongyang to investigate the disappearance of Japanese nationals in North Korea in the 1970s and 1980s. Japan imposed new sanctions in February 2016 and August 2017 in response to North Korean tests. Among other things, these measures freeze certain North Korean and Chinese assets and ban the entry of North Koreans and remittances over $880. Number 1 North Korea invests a huge proportion of its meager economy into its military, and its ambitious missile, nuclear, and cyber programs have caused widespread international alarm. Pyongyang spent nearly one quarter of its GDP on the military over the past decade according to U.S. government estimates. Due to its military programs, Pyongyang has grown increasingly isolated from the global market and its people cut off from economic opportunity. The latest round of international sanctions adopted in September 2017 could stem the flow of $1.3 billion to Pyongyang. The new UN ban on textile exports, North Korea's second largest after coal, could cost the Kim regime about $800 million annually. Altogether, UN sanctions target 90% of Pyongyang's publicly reported export products. Sanctions will make it increasingly difficult for North Korea to sustain its economy, which is already in poor state. Kim and his family has used fear and brutal force to rule over the country. If the economy breaks down, it could lead to large-scale backlash from the people of North Korea, which could ultimately threaten the regime control over the country. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.